Hey guys, Double Wide 6. I have that drill press that I picked up and um, needs a lot of work, but uh, today's video we're going to go through and try and get rid of the rust, see how we do. So here the thing is, it's an old Rockwell Delta drill press, floor model, kind of rusted up basically on that table there and that back pipe. So we're going to go through and see if we can't remove it. I'll start out by uh, taking this thing apart. So the top case has three bolts going around. They're just little half inch bolts. And uh, the main pulley up here, there's a set screw about three o'clock on the left side of the drill. You got to actually uh, go through that bottom pulley. And that uh, loosens up everything. This should just lift off. So to take off the main gear head, you just loosen this nut and it did take a little bit of pressure so I had to put my hip kind of against the table and give it a good twist to get it to rotate and that could be because of the rust but uh, that freed right up and this can slide up although it's very heavy. I did notice that the motor, the uh, motor mount is only mounted on the right hand side and this side it just uh, goes against this adjustable tab here that you can loosen and tighten. Uh, it's kind of odd that they they mount it like that because um, I noticed that um, on online when I was reading about these drill presses a lot of these brackets on the uh, motors have broken over the years and other people's drills and uh, I'm doing a little maintenance too. I blew out the motor. There was a lot of dust in there and I just pulled off the oiling cap and uh, I'm going to use my pump oiler. It has a really nice thin brass nozzle. And I thought that this might be a little bit of a bad design that the motor's mounted like this. So how do you oil it? But I noticed when I looked at the hole here that it actually travels downhill. So that oil will roll into the bearing. So um, I'll oil that up and run it a little bit. Well, there's the motor running with no belt, just working that oil into the bearings. And when I looked over here, um, this, this device is actually a belt tensioner. So if you loosen this bolt, this thing's actually spring-loaded, and it comes out, and it, it'll back the uh, motor up a little bit to put more belt pressure on the pulleys. So that's why that's there, and uh, I'll get that set when I put the belt back on. I guess I should also notice there's an oiler on the bottom as well, so I'll pull that plug and get that oiled too. So the top lifted right off. I was able to do it myself. It got pretty heavy up near the top, so uh, you might want someone to help you if you're trying that on your own. And now I'm taking a look at some of these paint stains. Before I remove the table, it's going to be easier to scrape this off. Uh, I set it right to a good height. And I'm just using my glass scraper and this paint, you know, just sloppy. You drip paint and then leave it there. But underneath that paint, that's steel. And you can see it's, it has nice machining in it. So I'm just going to scrape this off before we go to treat the uh, rust. So, before I actually uh, treat the rust, I want to take off all these paint spots. And I found the best way to do it is to heat them up with a torch and kind of burn them off, get them really hot. And then I hit them with a wire brush. They got to be pretty hot to come off, though, I'll tell you that. They're real stubborn. hot enough. There you go. So I'm just slowly working them off. So here's parts we're going to treat and we're just using distilled vinegar. Uh, I've never done this myself. Um, but 
I've seen good results on uh, YouTube, so I figured I'd give it a try. And uh, looks pretty easy. So we'll just throw everything in the bin. This is me just doing a little bit of uh, rust removal using general distilled vinegar. I have a complete separate video that shows this process. That's why I'm fast forwarding it here. Some of this stuff requires a real light brushing. Like inside here you can't get to it. But, well with my main uh, wire brush. But uh, with the small one I built from my dishwasher motor it can get all in there and all around. So if you didn't see that build, you should check it out on my channel. But here you go. The nice thing about it is you can fit right over it and get into these little spots that you normally, like I said, wouldn't be able to get. And we can also, if we hold it tight, get in here. And you can see how uh, you can get in here and clean up this stuff. A little tough to do with one hand though. But you get the idea. So here's how I'm handling the headstock. Before I uh, paint it, I'm tape taping off and covering the motor, keeping that alone. And uh, just trying to do this as fast as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting. So I laid down the uh, first coat of paint and I'm using this Rust-Oleum hammered. It has a uh, kind of like a textured finish and it's in black and uh, the good thing about this paint is it takes an old machine and makes it look a little bit more modern and also that texture helps to hide any imperfections so that's just one coat so far just a little tip for you I'm taping off this table and it's very tedious to take a knife and cut your corners so what you can do is just tape it off and take a small file I usually use a half round one and if you just file slightly on the corner you can get the tape to actually wear through just like that it's easier than cutting so I started the reassembly process. I started with the bottom and you just put in the pipe and that little collar there and there's some Allen set screws on the back. And then I put on the table and I put on the top and someone commented they wanted to know how to adjust this uh, headstock up so that the, the pipe wasn't sticking out the top. I already adjusted it. All you have to do is set the stop collar at the proper height where before it was lower so the pole was sticking up so I just moved it up and it'll stick into the box a little bit but not out the top. So things are coming along pretty good. So we're down to the finishing touches here. I got myself a keyless chuck for this thing and we're just going to set that on there. And we're good to go. Well, I got the drill press all done. Here's a look at the table. I really like that hammered paint I used. Um, there's the new chuck. I went with the 5 8 inch because it goes... Uh, I think 132nd all the way up to 5 eighths. And I taped over the stickers and stuff. And I don't know if you remember, but the motor had some other stickers on it that looked pretty poor, so I took those off. 
but uh, overall I am uh, pretty impressed with the project I got a little more time in it than I actually wanted to and uh, I got tools all over the place but it was fun and I'm keeping this thing and I'll probably have it the next 25 30 years or whenever I die <laughs> so good project let's uh, give it a try so we're going to try this thing out and this is the uh, new keyless chuck and I talked to the guy where I, I bought this from um, and it's uh, what are they called Z Live Center that's the place to sell they sell a lot of lathe parts I called over there and uh, I was asking the guy some questions about them and basically I got a 5 8 inch chuck they make 3 8 they make half inch um, but uh, I got this one because the tolerance is tighter it's it's within two thousandths of an inch uh, you know as far as uh, wobble so we'll check that out and you can see the, the drill spins real nice and uh, it's quiet so and I'm just making sure you're in focus there and th this metal about like three sixteenths uh, steel. And I'm just trying to poke a hole through it. I just sharpened this bit, so seems to be cutting nice. Um, in fact, we can uh, we can actually check the thickness of this thing. It on there. Ooh. Yeah, it's about a quarter inch, so it's a little thicker than I thought. Um, so, anyhow, that's the drill press. It's working real well. And um, this is the chuck. And you can see how easily you can take in and out bits all the way up to half an inch and down to one thirty second, I believe. So uh, anyhow, I'm double wide six, and in this video, I will put a link to this chuck in case you're interested in ordering one from Amazon. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.